The president has been highly critical of players who have refused to stand for the Star Spangled Banner, and Mr. Trump has credited himself for this year's slipping NFL TV ratings. Joining our panel right now from Jupiter, Florida on this Super Bowl Sunday is a man who knows a thing or two about both football and politics. It's Brian Gumbel, host of Real Sports and HBO. Brian, uh, good to see you. Thanks Dr. for coming. Good morning. Out. Good morning. How are you doing, pal? Uh, I'm all right. Let me ask you this. You had a pretty powerful monologue after the president's initial comments when he made those um, uh, remarks in Alabama about uh, what owners ought to do to players. How does the president's insertion of politics into football, how has it impacted the game in your opinion? Well, I don't think you can totally ignore it, but I, 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 I'd like to believe that at this point people of goodwill recognize the protest is, is about police brutality and has nothing to do with the military or the flag. Um, so, yeah, has it had some effect on the uh, lessening of interest in the NFL game? I think that's part of it, but I think it's a very small part of it. I mean, I, th I think there's some bigger issues at work. Mm -hmm. I, I think. Um, Number one is, is, I think it was Malcolm Gladwell said that it's going to be in about 25 years socially unacceptable to be a football fan. I think the concussion problem is an issue. I think oversaturation is an issue. I think television is down in all shows across the right. board, morning shows and television news shows. And I, and I think the, the one that's being overlooked is the NFL product is not a very good entertainment product anymore. It's yeah. become a very uptight corporate league and a dink and dunk league. And... And people just aren't as drawn to it as they used to be. Hey, Brian, Hugh Hewitt, how much of the NFL's problems is really the flip side of the college game's ascendancy? Because everyone is now, I'm a Go Bucks fan, I'm a Browns fan, but Go Bucks first. How much is it that college got their act together? Hugh, I think you're right. You know, you, I heard you talking earlier about tribalism. Um, that evidences itself in the, in the football scene, as you know all too well. Folks in Alabama aren't interested in watching UCLA, USC, but they will watch Alabama, they will watch Auburn. Same for folks in Louisiana, Texas, et cetera. And, and, and so I, I think that is part of it, too, that the college game is growing. Um, the college game is not as much of a copycat league. It's not as much of a corporate league. It's not a stop-and-go league where you have to turn an instant replay every other second. And I think it's a more attractive product. And you also have the dilution of uh, the diminution of the audience in the NFL in that Sunday afternoon used to be sacrosanct. But now what you get on Sunday afternoon, you can get on Thursday night, you can get on Sunday night, yeah. you can get on Monday night. So it's not that big a deal anymore. Uh, Brian, Gene Robinson, um, how much uh, does viewership have to do with specific stars and specific teams? Like, you know, the, the Cowboys who were supposed to be good this year, who are America's team, in fact, were pretty awful. Uh, and, and no incentive for all those fans to watch. Aaron Rodgers, the best quarterback in the game, went down. Sorry, Chuck. Uh, <laughs> was injured. And uh, again, no incentive for all those Green Bay fans to watch. Do you think that's a factor or, or, or is that not important? You know what, Gene? I don't think it's as big a factor as it is in baseball where you need one of the, one of the big teams. You need the Yankees or the Dodgers or, some, or the Cubs to be engaged, for the nation to be engaged. But, but I do think if you ask the owners, they would say, yeah, people tune in to see the duel between Brady and Rodgers. They tune in to see Manning go against uh, someone else. And, and the idea of tuning in to watch um, second-string quarterbacks go at it does not, does not move the needle very much. But but uh, it's, they've always sold teams more than they've sold individuals, so I'm not sure that's that big a factor. Yamish? Talk to me a little bit about how the social impact um, of President Trump talking has really impacted how athletes feel the pressure to, to speak up. I think about athletes like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. There was a moment there where he, was, he is now very active. You think of Muhammad Ali feeling the need, because he's an African-American man, to speak up. Do the players that are playing now feel the pressure to speak up? Do you think that they want to speak up because of what's going on? Or do you think it's more something like they, are, they would naturally already be doing this? That's a great question. I, I do think that when the president weighed in, um, it energized African-American athletes and, and to an extent unified them in a way they had not been before. Um, just how much pressure they feel, I think, depends on their position on the team and the team they play for, the owner's stance. There are some owners who are more willing to, to allow the players, players a great deal of freedom ex of expression, and there are other players who aren't. And let's face it, if you are a star or if you are an indispensable member of a team, you have more latitude than, than the guy who's just barely hanging on for the job minimum. Hey, Bryant, uh, you uh, interviewed Mike Ditka. I'm not going to play the clip because I'm low on time here a couple years ago, and I'm sorry, we were all stunned when Mike Ditka said he wouldn't have his kid play football. And he, yeah. and he was cr almost in tears telling you this. 
but he just thinks there's the reward isn't great enough anymore. Yeah, a little bit of context. He was coming off of talking about a teammate of his, um, Mike Pyle, who was the center of the Bears teams that he was a part of and who was in a bed um, seriously ill um, with most of his problems relating to his years in football. And, and look, I, I don't think what he expressed is unusual just this past week. Didn't we hear Justin Timberlake say the yeah. same thing? I, I, think, I guess I, I kind of expe I, I expect it more from Justin Timberlake than Mike Ditka, you yeah. know. Yeah, I understand that. Uh, you're right. Uh, Iron Mike, you would think he'd love football till the day he died. And I think he still does love it. But, he, but you know, our eyes have been open to the dangers of the game. Yeah. And the reality is it, it's, it's not a game that's going to leave you healthy and of, and of sound mind. Brian, uh, on that note, I, I wish I could say we are going to end an upbeat note. It's still Super Bowl Sunday, and we're going to have a good time. Brian Cumble, thank you, sir. We hope so. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Chuck. Appreciate it. That's all we got for today. Thanks for watching. Get the pizza, the wings, and at our party, we're going to po' boys, too. Get it all ready for the big game. And, of course, we'll be back next week. Because if it's Sunday, it's Meet the Press. Hey, NBC News fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here. And then click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.